Hi class, I want to do a lecture, a short lecture on section 2.2 of your textbook that's talking about numerical patterns in nature. And it turns out that um, there's a, a sequence of numbers that are naturally occurring in our in our world. So the topics this week is going to be, or in this lecture, is talking about discovering the beauty in nature of what we call Fibonacci numbers. So we'll start this lecture with this question. Suppose you have this set of numbers, okay? So what is the next number in the sequence? So 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. What, what, what comes next? So, you, you know, you, looking at it initially, I'm, I'm like not sure what the, what the pattern is here. Um, so let me, let me give you some, some objects or some pictures of things in nature where, where these numbers come up quite a bit, where you can see these numbers coming up. So if you look here, these are all um, images from, uh, you know, plants in, in the real world. And you can see there's, there's, there's this type of spiral pattern here. And it, and it looks like um, there's some symmetry or something in common with the number of, like, spirals on this pineapple and maybe the, the leaves on, the, um, on this uh, daisy here. Okay. So let's think about this, the pineapple. List as many observations as you can about this and, and think about it in terms of the spirals. Well, if you count the spirals this way and then this way on it, you'll notice that one number is eight and one number is 13. Well, let me go back to this list of numbers here. Here's eight and here's 13. If you count the spirals on the daisy, so you count the inner spirals and then the outer spirals here um, on the number of like pedal number of um, parts to the, to the spiral here, you're going to get the numbers um, uh, 21 and 34 when you do this. All right, so the pineapple has two sets of spirals, right? The numbers 8 and 13. The daisy has two sets of spirals itself, 21 and 34. So when you compare these numbers, um, you know, like what, what, what pattern do you see? Well, it's a little confusing at first, but what does 8 plus 13 get you? 8 plus 13 gets you 21. Wait a second. Now it's 13 plus 21. 13 plus 21 gets you 34. So if you look back here, what does 1 plus 1 get you? It gets you 2. What's 1 plus 2 get you? It gets you 3. What's 3 plus the previous number 2? It gets you 5. What's 5 plus the pre? Wow, look at that. So on and so on. So do you notice the pattern here? Okay. You know, what is 21 plus 34 ends up getting you 55. What's 55 plus 34? That ends up getting you 89. So those are the two previous numbers. Thinking about this, uh, what numbers must come before 8, all right? And how many numbers exist before 8? Well, so you have to remember, to get to 13, what did you have to add to 8? You had to add 5 to it. To get to 8, what did you have to add to 5? You had to add 3 to it, and so on. So you can see the pattern. So the following sequence of numbers here are called Fibonacci numbers. And, and there's an infinite number of Fibonacci numbers, and they go on forever. And they were originally defined by Leonardo of Pisa, or just called Fibonacci. So these are the numbers, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, da, 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 and so on. All right, well, something really cool happened when we started discovering Fibonacci's with what's called the Fibonacci, Fibonacci quotients. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to find each quotient here, and then what do you notice? So what you do here is the fraction of adjacent Fibonacci numbers. So you're going to take each Fibonacci number, excuse me, and divide it by its previous number. So you're going to go 1 divided by 1, 2 divided by 1, 3 divided by 2, 5 divided by 3, 8 divided by 5, and so on. Now, if you do this, I'm not going to write it all out here. It's actually listed in your textbook. You get the following, right, when you start figuring out these Fibonacci um, quotients. It starts out with 1.0, 2.0, and then all of a sudden it starts converging to this number that looks like 1.6 something. So 1.61 something, something, something. If you keep doing this with the Fibonacci quotients, you're gonna see this, okay? Well, this is weird. So these numbers occur naturally in the real world. And then when I look at these Fibonacci quotients, um, 
you know, we, get, we, we notice something. All right, so what number do we get? So as the Fibonacci numbers in the previous quotients get larger and larger and larger, like what number does it look like we're approaching? Well, this is called the unending ones. All right, so if you see here, like one divided by one is equal to one. Two divided by one is equal to one plus one divided by two, or one plus one divided by one. Three divided by two is equal to two plus one divided by two, or one plus one divided by one plus one over one, and so on. You can see five divided by three ends up being one plus, and this looks like a never ending pattern of ones, like the larger the number that gets. This here is what's called the golden ratio. So if this were to go on forever, we define it with the Greek letter phi. And the golden ratio phi is equal to one plus one divided by one plus one divided by one plus one divided by and so on and so on. This golden ratio here, all right, is this never ending ones. And this part right here, one plus one divided by and so on and so on, can just get replaced with phi. And so the, we have the golden ratio phi is equal to one plus one divided by itself phi. If you were to solve this equation for phi, which is done in your textbook, you can see that this number right here, phi is equal to one plus the square root of five divided by two. Well, look at what number you get. 1.618, da, 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 da. That looks really, really close what it looks like we were going towards. All right, so this, this golden ratio, you know, occurs naturally in the real world, going back. You see the golden ratio when you divide the, num the t larger number of spirals divided by the smaller number of spirals on a pineapple. Same thing with the daisy, so on and so on. If you were to do the same with this, this object and the sunflower and so on, you would see the same thing. You would see the golden ratio coming up naturally in the real world. All right, um, I want to end this lecture talking about this fun example um, of how you can use Fibonacci numbers to play this game called sticks, okay? So here are the rules. Start with a pile of sticks. Literally doesn't matter what number of sticks. It could be 50, it could be 15 sticks, all right? Person one removes any number of sticks, at least one stick, but you can't remove all of them, okay? So if there's 15 sticks in the pile, I could remove one through 14. Okay, I have to leave at least one stick if possible. Person two removes as many as they wish with the restriction that they must take at least one stick, but no more than two times the number of sticks of the previous person. For example, if there's 15 sticks, the first person removes three sticks. The second person can remove anywhere between one and six sticks because they could remove up to twice as many as the previous person. The person who takes the last stick Okay, the last person to pick up all the sticks wins. Okay, that's how you play Fibonacci sticks. All right, well, it turns out there's a, an optimal strategy for this. Okay, and the optimal strategy is to use Fibonacci numbers. And if you go first, if you're the first player to remove a stick using Fibonacci numbers, you can always win this game. So if you look in your textbook, they have this... Um, talk about this method here, this procedure for helping you to um, win this game of sticks. And this, this, this game of sticks um, uh, will come up in your homework a little bit. So it's this part right here. And it goes like this. If we are careful to use Fibonacci numbers, we can always win this game. Here is how. First, we make sure the initial number of sticks we start with is not a Fibonacci number, okay? So the example I'm gonna do is the number 15. 15 is not a Fibonacci number. Now, we must be person one, and we must find some poor soul to be person two. If we play it just right, we will always win, okay, this game. The secret is to write the number of sticks in the pile as the sum of non-consecutive Fibonacci numbers, so Fibonacci numbers that are not in a row, Figure out the smallest Fibonacci number occurring in the sum, and then remove that many sticks from the pile on the first move. Now it's your luckless opponent's turn. 
no matter what he or she does, you, re you will repeat the, per the, the preceding procedure. Okay, so if you remove one and they remove seven, whatever, then you just repeat the Fibonacci. If you remove one and they remove two, excuse me, then you just repeat this process. Okay, that is once he or she is done, we count the number of sticks in the pile, express the sum as the sum of non-consecutive Fibonacci numbers, and then remove that number of sticks, all right? All right, that equals the smallest Fibonacci number in the sum. So the fact is that no matter what our poor opponent does, we will always be able to remove the number of sticks without breaking the rules. Okay, and you can experiment with this game and try it. Wager at will or not. All right, let me show you what we mean by this non sum of non consecutive Fibonacci numbers. Okay, so here's the game. Suppose you are playing a round of Fibonacci numbers with a friend. You start with 15 sticks. Okay, so I'm going to write that down. All right, here's what you do. Your move, you remove two sticks so there's 13 sticks left. I'll talk about if that was the best move or not. We'll, we'll see. So your friend then takes one stick. So there's 12 sticks left. All right. You then take two sticks. How many sticks are left? There's 10. And your friend then decides, you know what, I'm just going to take one stick. All right, what should your next move be? All right, and can you make it without breaking the rules of the game? And then let's talk about if you made a mistake at some point, okay? So you, you want to win this game. So the problem says, or the rule is, is, is 9 a Fibonacci number first off? Let's go back and look at our Fibonacci numbers. All right, they're right here, one, one, two, three, five, eight. They are not Fibonacci numbers, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna write this as the sum of non-consecutive um, Fibonacci numbers. Well, can I write nine as one plus eight? They're, they're not consecutive, they're not right after each other. So yeah, I can write. So the optimal move once you do that is to, um, to remove the minimum number of those. So what you should do, your best move, would be to remove one stick. So there should be eight, you remove one, okay? So yes, you can make a move that will guarantee that you win no matter what, okay? And you, and, and you would repeat the process no matter what the, your friend did. Like suppose your friend was like, okay, all right, you remove one, I'll remove two. So there's six left. All right, well then what should your next move be? Well, you're gonna go back to the Fibonacci numbers. There's six left. There's, you can write six as the sum of two non-consecutive Fibonacci numbers, which is one and five. So you should remove one and so on and so on. All right, so the next thing you have to ask yourself is, um, did you make any, any mistakes when you played this game? All right, so if you started with 15, Okay, can we write 15 as the sum of non-consecutive uh, Fibonacci numbers? Uh, let's see, 15 would be 13 plus two, right? Perfect, you removed two when it was your turn. Absolutely, that's great. Okay, so your friend now had removed one and you had 12 sticks left right here. So let's see if you made a mistake here. So can we write 12 as the sum of um, Fibonacci numbers, non-consecutive? Non uh, yeah, I think you can. I think you can write it as the sum of one plus three plus eight. So in this step right here, did you make a mistake? How many did you remove? Well, you, you decided to remove two in this step right here. But using the correct formula, you really should have only removed one. So as you can see here, you know what your friend should have done when, when they had 10 in here. Your friend should have said, well, 10 is 2 plus 8, and they should have removed 2, and then they would have won from here on out. 
All right. Um, I know this was a little bit quick, this video, so I encourage you to read the text and iron out all the things that I talked about. Thanks.